With the yo ho ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome to my character bios for Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy, Big Bang, and Supernova. There's going to be three of these videos, and if you're following the Let's Play, then this slots in around the time of part 22, or if you're just playing the game for yourself, this is relevant to the end of chapter 5, where we have finished the qualifiers on Earth. We're going to set off for space, and we need to pick 11 new members of the Earth 11 to take with us. So this video is going to cover the characters who are available in both Supernova and Big Bang. So they're mainly Ryman players, but these are ones that you can play in either version of the game. And then after that, head over to the end slate and depending on whether you're playing Big Bang or Supernova, you can click through to your version of the game to see which characters you should be considering for your own playthrough. Or of course, if it's just for the sake of my let's play, I'm playing Big Bang, but it's still nice to know who is in Supernova as well. But for the time being, let's take a look at the first character and see how these bios are going to work. So as we move on to the very first bio for Sam Guk Han, let's talk a little bit about how to actually read these things. So we've got the info box up in the top right. Uh, not much of that is going to be filled in for Sam Guk because he's not got many gimmicks, but you can see obviously his name, his type element, which is fire, and his position as goalkeeper. We're going to go through for the available inbox all of the characters who are available in both games first. I must stress that this doesn't mean Big Bang exclusives and Supernova exclusives can't be obtained in those games. They can, just only in Big Bang or only in Supernova can you get certain ones of them at this point of the game. Then everyone becomes available in the post game. Some are easier than others. For Sam Guk, I've got recruitment difficulty easy and there are higher levels than that, but I must stress that easy recruitment difficulty does not actually mean that it's easy. No one in this selection is easy to recruit. I think I have about 55 bios to go over across these videos and not a single one of them is in my opinion easy because they all require uh, gold and friendship coins, the rarest kind. They often need you to have recruited everyone else from their Palpac society. Uh, or at least 10 players minimum. They require you to have beaten the game, of course. Uh, sometimes other characters within those 10 players will have recruitments, and yeah, they're just expensive. Nobody is easy to get, but when you see an easy box, that means they are easy in comparison to the others. Sam Guk, for example, yes, it needs you to have beaten the game, get 10 gold friendship points, and recruit at least 10 players from Ryman Society. But that's all there is to it. Some characters will have quite a bit more than that. Uh, we have obviously the moves underneath that, including the level at which everything is learned, what it does, what the TP is, so how expensive it is to use, and how powerful it actually is. Nitro Slap, for example, is Sam's first move that he gets by level up at level 10, except actually he has Combustion Catch in his fifth slot by default, which is even weaker, and Sam, Thank f <laughs> punishingly for my tutorial mode, is the only character out of these 55 to have a fifth move. Uh, thank you for that one. But Nitro Slap, for example, it's cheap at 30 TP. It's not that strong at 90 power, but it is a punch, which is uh, specified by the P. That shows that the ball will be launched away when you use it instead of him catching it. And uh, at the end of it, he's got God Hand X, the most expensive move which is 200 power, which does make it the joint strongest goalkeeper move in the game. However, quite a lot of the other goalkeepers that we're going to be going through in these bios also have access to a 200 uh, power goalkeeper move, which I'll say as we move into the stats, you can see on the left, FP and TP are, are at the top. FP is how much energy you can consume in a match. So basically stamina, except I can't call it stamina because there is also a stamina stat near the bottom, uh, which is how quickly you will burn through your FP. Uh, meanwhile, TP is the amount of special move points you can use, basically PP from Pokemon. In the case of Sam, you don't really need to worry about the likes of Kick, Dribble and Block. The main one that's going to matter for Sam is his catch stat, and unfortunately, out of all the characters that are both story required like Terry and available uh, through these Supernova and Big Bang bios, 
Sam does indeed have the lowest catch out of the goalkeepers at 138. That's considerably lower than the Terry that you're already going to have. So, although he's got a great move in God Hand X, yeah, he's not exactly an exemplary choice, but we like him and he's at least uh, a solid backup choice. I'll move on to Rusty next so we can stare at something new. Uh, for other stats of notice, we've got Freedom in the very bottom left which is mainly one for the very technical players. Freedom is basically how much can you take away from one stat to put it into another, or how much total extra points can you add to something. For example, if I went to the dark room with Rusty and said, right, I want to seriously ham up his block stat, I could potentially pour another 230 points into it. Uh, and that sounds like a lot, but actually uh, some characters have freedom going up to 300 and the average is about 250 uh, and also you can recruit Wonderbot in the post game and he's the only one to have about 400 freedom which low-key makes him like the best character in the game but we're not going to be going over him we're going to go over the stats for Roos Rus Roosty? Rusty and unfortunately he blows <laughs> he's a defender and his block is only 117 that's not great his moves as well Runaway Train costs 8 TP for 30 power, and he'll eventually get Pincer Pinch. The bonus for Pincer Pinch is that he at least has a good defensive move at a low level, so it makes him okay for the story. But you really could just go with anyone else. I like this guy, but he's, he's not a recommendation. Someone who is a recommendation is Gabby Garcia. Yes, you can see by the sudden jump in things in the stats box at the top, that Gabby might well be a good option for you. Now, if I'm talking generally, when you're picking these 11 players, um, an extra goalkeeper, that's a fine option. You want to have some new forwards, possibly some new midfielders. Defenders is probably the one you need the least, because Earth 11 already gives you four very, very good ones. Um, but if you are going to add to that team, then Gabby Garcia, it's hard to do better than this guy, because... He comes with a fighting spirit, Brynhilda, which is now available to use. Yes, Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy has gone aside from its original, oh, you can't use fighting spirit, you now can. That doesn't apply to the anime, but in the games from this point on, you can use fighting spirits. And also, if your character was in Chrono Stones, then that probably means they can armify as well. There are certain characters from Go 1 who will have spirits that don't have the ability to armify, but Gabby Garcia is one of the many that can just armor fire Brynhilda right out of the bat and just become incredible with his access to Mystifying Mist and Mystic Mist at really low levels. He's got an, an excellent dribble in the case of Southern Cross. Mystic Mist actually got buffed for this game. It's now 120 power instead of 100, and his stats are just looking really excellent. 144 on block, got a lot of technique, got a lot of speed. The guy's just good. Miximax is also available in the uh, banner at the top for you to look at. Miximax is not available until the post game, and it is significantly worse than it was in Chrono Stone, which is a good thing, really. It was quite overwhelming how well Miximax and Armify could stack. Now it's more just a permanent all game long addition with a very small stat increase and a permanent change in appearance. But I still want to keep record of them because Gabby has three perfect Mixy Maxes. A lot of the perfect Mixy Maxes from the last game actually got taken out. It's now only the ones with unique models that were made from scratch that actually got kept. But Gabby, you've already got Ricardo, so if you want to Mixy Max him with Ricardo, or indeed Mixy Max Ricardo with Gabby, then all you need to do is pick him right now and you'll even get Heaven's Time in your moveset for it. Itor is perhaps his best one because it gives you access to Perfect Pass, one of the better skills in the game. Uh, but the one I've put in is his canon Joan of Arc, which would get you Spirit Guard, even though it's uh, quite a bit tougher to obtain. Gabby himself is probably the hardest one to recruit out of these guys so far, but it's still doable out of everyone on this entire selection of 55 potential extra additions to the Earth-11. This is probably the guy who canonically deserves it the most, the current captain of Ryman and a really, really good defender. It makes sense. But if you want a different option for defenders, Wanli actually has slightly more block than Gabby, just 
not by much. Unfortunately, both Great Wall and Wall of Atlantis got reduced in power. At least Great Wall is extremely, extremely affordable, um, but Wanli, he's definitely quite good at defending, but he doesn't carry any of the gimmicks that Gabby or even your own Earth-11 players do. So mainly just pick him if you like him. Now, pick him if you like him could not apply more strongly to Adekebe. I wish I didn't have to do this to my guy, but in an objective informational video, he really sucks. His highest stat is Technique on 112, backed up by 110 for Dribble on a midfielder. It's not great, his kick and block is quite low. He's even lost one of his blocking moves in Killer Whale. Thankfully, Whirlpool got significantly buffed, so now he does at least have one good move. But Flying Fish, his signature long shot, has been buried into the ground here. It is only 50 power now. It's extremely weak. He's got Bubblegum as a new dribbling option. Uh, that's been brought back from the original trilogy to be in Galaxy. But his moves suck and his stats suck. But he is my guy. And, well, if we're talking about my Let's Play, I don't think him being bad is enough to put me off him as a potential choice. It perhaps would put me off Eugene Peabody, who is very, very good at dribbling and running. His speed stat is one we'll take a look at in a little bit, um, but without the ability to really do kicking or blocking, he's very much a single-purpose guy. Zigzag Spark is a little better in Galaxy than it used to be in previous games, but Dragster has been nerfed quite a lot, and even Vac Attack has been made considerably more expensive, despite being weaker. But the main thing to note here is Speed Boost Plus at level 15. So that is a move that will add 30 points to his speed stat, and that's why if you look at the table on the left, Eugene's speed stat is 138, but because he's got Speed Boost Plus, it actually becomes 158 once he learns that move. So if you were to change that move for something else in the post game, then those 30 points would disappear. And he would also really struggle to get them re-added because he's only got 200 freedom. Eugene Peabody, once again, is not great, but if you like him, he's here for you to use. Kaiser actually has the highest stat that we've seen so far, 162 on his kick. It's nothing compared to, say, the victor that you've already got on your own team, but he's, he's all right. We just will be going through much, much stronger forwards in the future. All of his shots are actually uh, Earth Element, which is quite a rarity, and he does have a good dribble in here as well. I like that they've given him Splitting Hairs. He's not the only character to have access to Splitting Hairs in this selection of characters, but it finally gives him something uh, other than just having Sidewinder and occasionally Ballista Barrage. But Ballista Barrage, in turn, <laughs> is kind of missed. He's got no long shot. Sidewinder, though, is the first one I want to point out as being a shot chain. That is uh, noted with a C in the corner of the word, so shot chains and especially shot blocks are better than ever in this game, so do keep an eye out for them. His stats are looking okay, but as we see some of the other forwards available, they will start to look a bit less so. Itor makes for another good defensive addition, but uh, again, he's just kind of canonically somebody that you would think of as a potential defender. He was on New Inazuma National in the Chrono Stones movie. Uh, Gabby is definitely the one you'd think of first as a new addition for Defender, but Aitor is kind of up there as well. He does have a bit of a problem in that he learns his moves quite slowly. You do have Hunter's Net straight away, but it's not quite as strong as it used to be. Uh, he will eventually get Spatial Portal, which is very, very good, but you'll have to wait until level 63 to do it. It is worth noting, if you want to have that Mixy Max between Gabby and Aitor, you can just get them both now and you'll be able to Mixy Max them straight away in the post game. Uh, but Block at 146 is definitely plenty good enough and Aitor certainly stands his ground as a decent pick. Someone who really went through the ringer though, unfortunately, is Roma. Someone who's been a major character on both of the previous two teams, now not even a candidate for Earth-11 and they made sure that if you did add him to the Earth-11, He's been nerfed as well. Katana Kick used to be one of the stronger moves in the game at 160 power. It's now only 80 power at a cost of 30 TP. They genuinely sliced it in half. No care in the world for Katana Kick at all. He's still got his good dribbles, 
Acrobatic Keep and Rising Dragon, but even then, Rising Dragon is only a little stronger than Acrobatic Keep at a much higher cost, and he has to learn it at a higher level. And then Powerful Shooter, while it's a decent skill to have, it basically means that if someone tries to shot block your shot, it won't lose as much power. But he used to have Put Your Back Into It as his skill, which was widely seen as one of the best skills in the game. And now, it, yeah, it's just gone. His stats are certainly not bad, 123 kick and 141 on the dribble with a decent block as well. And of course he does have still the ability to bring out Musashi and Armorfy it. Again, there won't be too many options for actual Armorfied spirits, so that is something that goes massively in Roma's favour. But it's almost like they tried to balance him, saying, if he's one of the few that can bring out a spirit and armor fight, we need to nerf everything else about him. So he's he's above average, but he's lost a lot along the way. Lucian Dark, meanwhile, has gained some good stuff. Emperor Penguin number two is a little stronger now. So is Dark Energy Star, if you get him to that kind of level. And Perfect Pass is, uh, from a competitive player's perspective, one of the better skills in the game, but only if you know how to use it. He's also got a brand new addition to the moveset altogether in Silk Road, one of my favourite dribbles of all time, so I'm just really happy to see that on him, whether it makes sense or not. He does genuinely stand out as a fairly good addition to the Earth-11, purely on the narrative that he would be playing for his uncle's team. You can unite Lucian Dark and Ray Dark in this way, and you know what? His kick's decent and his speed is surprisingly good. He's even got a reasonable bit of freedom to play around with, just, again, most of these bios will be about forwards, and one without a spirit is just from the default going to be worse than some of the others. Like, for example, Faye, who granted I don't really see as much of a forward, I think he should have been a midfielder from the start, but this isn't here for my opinions. He is a forward and he does have access to a fighting spirit with full moon fever. It's worth reminding again that although Armorfy is still probably the best thing in the game in terms of carrying your characters, they at least buffed every single Fighting Spirit regular shot uh, by a big amount, like Full Moon Fever along with loads of others will have gone from 200 power to 300 power, so now you've finally got a reason to use it, unlike in Chrono Stones where an armified Splitting Hairs would have just been stronger than it anyway. I especially want to talk about his Mixy Maxes though, just because it paints a perspective of how much they've kind of been nerfed but are still worth keeping in mind. Faye's kick stat right now is 144, which is good. If you Mixy Max him with Tyranno, the first Mixy Max he had in Chrono Zones, that would go up to 162, so an increase of only about 18. And then if you Mixy Max him with Big, his better one, then that goes up to 167. So still only an increase of 23, but it does also bring with it uh, the addition of Spirit Smash uh, as a move. So, above all, he's got the ability to Armify, he's got great stats, and the main perk of Faye is just that he's got a move of all kinds. He's got a low cost shot to use straight away in Bouncing Bunny. He's got a stronger shot to use later in the form of Splitting Hairs, which is even stronger than it used to be, by the way. He's got randomly one of the best defensive moves in the game in Ozone Flare, which is also a shot block. And he's got Dance on Air, one of the better dribbles in the game, at level 13. It is very, very hard not to recommend Faye, I have to admit. But if we're talking about characters that are hard not to recommend, Goldie Lemon might be one of the most straightforward, obvious choices out of all of these bios that we're gonna go on. She has a block stat of 173, backed up by 167 TP so that she can actually use all of her moves, which in turn are also amazing. She's a defender and she's got Fire Tornado, Triple Crusher, the joint strongest shot in the game, or at least second place, at 200 power. It's just something else to have on her. She's got the Fighting Spirit, Amaterasu, that you can armify during the story. You could Mixy Max her with the Queen of Dragons in the post game if you wanted. Um, but she also just kind of immediately has access to a long shot like Do Re Mi, which is still 160 power to just get gold from anywhere. But given that Goldie Lemon is probably going to be one of the most widely chosen options out of every one of these character bios, I do still want to mention her negatives. She's nearly a 10 out of 10 player, 
but she has had some nerfs compared to Chrono Stones. Her moves are now across the board more expensive to use, just she has so much TP that it doesn't actually matter that much, especially when you can use them while armor fight anyway, but they are more expensive, it's, it does matter at low levels. The main thing is that Goopy Gloopy Goo, the only blocking move that she actually gets, has actually been given a high foul ratio. It certainly didn't have this before, but now it's actually one of the most likely moves in the game to cause a foul, and it does trip you up quite a lot. I would say if you want to use her, you probably want to give her a skill that makes her commit fouls less often, or just give her a different, even better blocking move when you eventually pick one up. But Goldie Lemon, yeah, she's kind of a no-brainer. If you want her, absolutely go for it. So we've seen two of the characters that time-travelled from the future, now let's have a couple that have time-travelled from the past. And Mark Evans, the main character of the whole Inazuma 11 franchise, is actually a really, really good addition to the team. One thing, for example, that's worth pointing out is that he's actually one of the harder characters to recruit if you don't get him at this point in the game. They send you through some real loops to get a hold of your so-called main character, so this is by far the easiest way to do it. But something that doesn't apply to most of the OG characters that they're bringing back from the first three games is that he does actually have a fighting spirit in the form of Margin, which has the move Margin the Great. He can't armor fight it, but this is a game where actually the fighting spirit's normal moves are stronger than the armor fired ones anyway, so that doesn't actually matter too much and you could still learn to armor fight in the post game anyway. So Margin the Great actually gives you a solid option, aside from Terry's stuff. Especially when you consider, out of all the players that we're going to be breaking down, goalkeepers are the ones that are kind of easiest to objectively say who is best. Case in point, Mark Evans' catch stat of 175 is the highest out of all of the options that we're going for. Terry is surprisingly high up the list himself, but Mark is definitely higher, and with both a fighting spirit and the ability to Mixy-Max with Arian Sherwind, who you already have, that just makes Mark a really solid option. And he's also, just in case you were in doubt, got Double God Hand, one of the strongest, and when I say one of the strongest, I mean the joint strongest goalkeeping moves in the game, which again, is stronger than anything that Terry has by default. They even give him Inazuma Break, just in case you want to use him upfield. Yeah, if you like Mark, then it's it's just a very smart pick. The only real question is, do you actually want another goalkeeper? Because in theory, if you do use one of those 11 slots on a goalkeeper, they might be the one that you use the least. Unlike those old forwards, but you know what? Axel Blaze has also been given the all-star treatment. His kick stat is 170, which is one of the highest that we're going to see all day. That is ridiculously high. And just like Mark, who had Margin because he basically had a fighting spirit in moves like Margin the Hand anyway, Axel Blaze also basically had a fighting spirit when he was using Fireball Storm, so now it's official. He does have Surtur as his fighting spirit, which gives him Fireball Storm. Once again, he can't armor fire, and that matters a little more than Mark, but at least you can armor fire in the post game, and with 170 power on that Fireball Storm, he could genuinely create some power stats that are higher than even the likes of Victor can achieve. You can best mix and max him with Sean Frost if you pick him at this stage, that's a nice thing to keep in mind. Looking at his moves, they are all fire-based shots, starting with cheap ones like Fire Tornado and even Triangle Double Z, a reference to the Kirkwood phase, but he will eventually get Fireball Screw, which makes a lot of sense as a shot chain, and Atomic Flare is new to Axel Blaze, but because it's a shot block, this is actually fantastic on him. It's the strongest shot that Axel has, but shot blocks are way better in Galaxy than they used to be. Simply, uh, if you did a shot block in the previous game with a shooting move, rather than something that just weakens it like Vac Attack or Wall of Atlantis, uh, if you use an actual shooting move, your shot has to be stronger than the move it's trying to beat out, but if it does, then you'll successfully deflect it. In previous games, it would just kind of kick it away a bit and roll it down the pitch. But in Galaxy, it actually sends that shot 
straight back towards the goal, it keeps all of the power that it was carrying before it got deflected, and then adds on your move's full strength as well. It doesn't make any sense. You should be losing the power of the shot that was originally thrown at you, but say, if I managed to block a shot that was carrying like 250 power with it, and then I hit it with the atomic flare, you keep that 250 power and add an atomic flare onto it and long shot it towards the goal from wherever you are along with any shot chains you want to hit along the way. So anyone who's got one of these is suddenly pretty good. Axel Blaze, I wouldn't say he's quite the best choice for a forward, um, but he's certainly... I think it's mainly just down to only having one element and he doesn't have quite the strongest moves, but you could always just give him one. So Axel Blaze, it's a solid pick. Jude Sharp, funnily enough, might be the hardest one to recommend. Maybe it's something to do with uh, adult Jude doing the recruiting for this process and having young Jude on the screen at the same time as him. The main problem with Jude is that he doesn't have a spirit like Mark and Axel do, but also his strongest shot is only in a Zuma break, something that Mark already had, and at 140 power it's no slouch, but we've seen characters with uh, 200 power shots like Goldie on Fire Tornado Triple Crusher. The main thing you want to keep in mind for Jude is that he's very hard to get if you don't pick him at this stage. Again, they really put you through the ringer if you want this guy. And if, for example, you wanted to use Caleb Stonewall as something that you knew, then getting Jude might complement that because he could be a perfect Mixie Max for him. And 165 on Dribble is still really, really good. He just doesn't have the move set to accommodate it because the only dribble he's got is Illusion Ball at 60 power. You'll definitely want to give him a different one if you want to actually use him as a midfielder. Overall, it probably would have helped him if they just gave him Emperor Penguin number 3, uh, but no, it's Emperor Penguin number 2 that you're going to have. At least it's a shot chain. Nathan is the next of the OG shouts, and he still takes a little bit of time uh, to unlock, but we're kind of done with the spirits and the best Mixie Maxes here. He just is what he is. And what he is, is a very fast defender with 164 speed and a decent block stat as well. And the good thing is, for once in his life, he actually does have a good defensive move in the form of Ozone Flayer. However, he doesn't get it until level 51. So although Nathan Swift, for the first time, is actually going to have a good defending move, he probably won't have it during the story, and will just kind of learn it once you've already beaten the game. This is the most Nathan thing that I've ever heard, but uh, at least he's got Wind God's Dance. It's weaker than it used to be, but it's still helpful. Nathan Swift, although he's officially a defender, the speed really does make him more of a midfielder anyway from people's playstyle, and 115 dribble is okay. Cool Up is quite good because it raises his success rate against female characters, and this is... Again, a game where we actually will be playing against girls, unlike other FFI-type games. So Nathan Swift, yep, if you want someone quick, then this is your guy. He's not exceptional or anything, but he's certainly popular enough, so I know plenty of you will be picking him anyway. And much the same for Sean Frost. But he is actually very, very good. I think it's very sad that he's lost his best Mixie Max with Njord Snow, because it technically didn't have an original model, so now it's gone but he does still have one with Axel Blaze, so that is an option you can use. The moveset is pretty important, because he's got Eternal Blizzard at level 1, which is nice and cheap for him to use, and then later he'll get Legendary Wolf, which is now a long shot as of Chrono Stones, so that gives him some use. Again, you'll want to give him a different shot if you want to have something that truly makes the most of that 165 power kick, but with all of his kick, dribble and block being at least 120, and even his speed being high, Sean Frost, he's not lost any impact with age. The only thing he's lacking is a fighting spirit. One thing that would have helped him is if Frostical and Land of Ice were swapped positions. Land of Ice used to actually be really strong in Chrono Stones, but now it's only 80 power, which I think makes sense, because it's at least nice and cheap for him and he's not a defender anyway. But that probably should have been the move he got at level 22, rather than Frostical, which costs 55 TP and will pretty much wipe him out just to use it during the main story. So I would have swapped those two, but all four of these moves are useful to him. Then give him something else, and Sean Frost is a solid pick. 
And now we move on to the final character who is an option in both Big Bang and Supernova, and it's Saur. And I've got to admit, he's amazing. <laughs> he's far from anyone's favourite character in the Inazuma 11 series, uh, one of the most widely criticised. But with 149 block, that is certainly good, it's not as high as some others. But he gets Jungle Jam at level 11! That's a brilliant move! And he just has it practically from the off for shot blocking and just generally stopping people in their tracks. This currently tops anything that we have on our own Earth 11 players, and he will back it up with other dribbles like Acrobatic Keep and Zigzag Spark. Spirit Hunter increases his block and dribble stats against opponents that have fighting spirits out. We won't actually be challenging anyone who has a fighting spirit, they're only for us to use in the main story, but it's worth keeping in mind. And he does indeed have one in the form of Jaguarrior with Hunter Spear, and of course, he can armor fly it. Even his catch stat is alright. They genuinely just wanted to make sure that this Saw guy was an objectively brilliant choice for your team, just to make up for the fact that people don't especially like him. But hey, if you can tolerate having Saw on your team, absolutely do it. Uh, I think no one really stops Goldie from being the best defender option available, but he genuinely contends with Gabby as potentially being even better if you want him there. But that's it for everyone who's available as an Earth 11 option in both Big Bang and Supernova. I've now got the links on screen so that you can click which one to move on to next. Click the Big Bang one to see which characters are available in that game. It is especially important for the Let's Play because I am of course playing on Big Bang. While you can click the other video to see what the options are in Supernova if that is what you're playing at home. Or at the very least see who we're missing out on as a choice over the course of the Let's Play. See you in one of those!